everyone, Raimi here, and today I want to talk about peer review, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So what is peer review? What's the purpose? What are some of the good things about it? What are some of the bad things about it? Um, I see a lot of discussion on this in forums, on Twitter and stuff about the peer review process. And it's something that's really kind of captured my attention since I started working on my PhD, you know, 12, 13, 14, <laughs> something years ago, quite a while now. Um, it seems like yesterday, but it's been quite a while. But when I really started learning about the peer review process and what it meant, how it worked, and as I participated in it, what did I learn from that? Um, so peer review is a method that scientists or really anyone in academia uses to self-regulate. What that means, it's, it's really a form of validity. So what it means is that like, let's say I write an article or I did a documentary, or I wrote, I write something, I publish some kind of media, I give it to other experts in my field, and they kind of critique it and say, you know what, this isn't correct here, and you need to fix this to make it correct. So the process of peer review is this self-regulation. It's the idea that if a journal has peer reviewers, that there is a much less chance, you know, that technically bad articles that aren't correct won't make it through the process and be published. Um, now, I would never say 100% because nothing's ever 100%, but what should happen is a significantly less amount should be published based on the peer review process. Um, you know, peer review is designed to make something worthy or good. Um, it's designed to critique and provide evidence for. And you notice I'm saying all these big words that have a lot of different meanings, you know, like the word worthy. What does that mean? Um, and that's kind of one of the problems with peer reviewed is that each journal has to define that a little differently. How do we define the operate? What is peer review? If I ask 50 different researchers what peer review is, I'm going to probably get 50 slightly different definitions. Almost like when I say to my students, what's the term multimedia mean? And I get 50 different definitions of multimedia. So we have to really operationally define what this thing is. And it's one of the things that we don't, even though each journal does that, it, it tends to mean something different. Um, but you know, in the, in the general population and in academia, so everywhere, peer review usually means like, this has been vetted, it's good, we accept this blindly. Um, and unfortunately, we cannot do that. So one of the lessons, I, my professor during my doctorate was brilliant. So what he did, this is a great lesson. So he gave us this article um, from a journal that's no longer in publication anymore. Um, one of the top journals in my field, one of the best. Top journals, like you just assume like everything in there is gold. Like it's just, it's just great, you know? Um, and he told us to go home and critique the article. So our homework assignment was to go critique the article. So all of us came in, you know, mine was like, you know, just saying all the great things about the article, how it was good, what they did, all the good stuff they did, all, how the methodology was really good, how the data they collected that was really good, um, and all that stuff. So we submit our homework, and, you know, the next class we come in, and our instructor is kind of looking at all of us. He had a real scary look. Like, if he was looking at everyone, just, like, not saying anything, everyone was like, oh, my gosh, what's he going to ask me? Because he had a, he was known as, like, he would ask you really tough things and make you really, like, think. Um, so he starts giving us back all our articles, and we're seeing the, the feedback. And just big red X's on everyone's paper. Like, I swear, my paper just had a big red X. Like, this is all wrong. Um, and I'm thinking, like, well, what did I do wrong? How did I not critique this correctly? So he explained the backstory of the article he had given us. And apparently what had happened is that the article was completely flawed. The methodology was incorrect. The data was incorrect. I was an inexperienced researcher, so I was learning about methods. So I didn't really know what was good and bad at that time. Um, <clears throat> the article had made it through because the publisher, the editor of the, uh, of the great peer-reviewed journal at the time, this was one of his mentors who had written the article. So he just accepted it. I don't believe it was a he. Uh, had just accepted it in the journal without really going through the peer review process, even though, or it might have even went through, but he just accepted it, even though it had, was significantly flawed. The point of that lesson was to teach me do not trust anything. Even if it's in a great peer review journal, you can't just blindly trust it. It was a really powerful lesson for me. Taught me to, no matter what article I'm reading, no matter who wrote it, make sure I'm checking it. And he also taught us what to look for in articles. So, you know, 
Very important, very good class. I learned a lot from this guy. But, so what is, you know, so peer review does help make articles and journals better, right? But what doesn't it do? So there are, you know, one of the problems with peer review is, as I said, we don't know what it is. So I've gotten feedback from my articles. You know, I've gotten some really odd feedback, and I think it's a, it goes to show how the peer review process really needs to be refined, revamped, and we need to really talk about what this is. What is the purpose of it? What should it do? You know, I mean, when I get comments back from articles that they don't, that a reviewer doesn't accept my paper because they don't like that I use the word however in the beginning of a sentence somewhere, did that really, does changing, does that change, or their suggestion even modify the scope of the paper? Um, sometimes I'll get an, an author, or a reviewer who wants to hear more about one of the articles in my lit review, or wants to hear more about a topic in my lit review that I've discussed thoroughly in the lit review, and I know I have enough there. They just are more interested in the article, in the, that topic themselves, and want me to add more. And it doesn't actually add to the paper whatsoever, because I've already made my justification. Adding more to it doesn't mean anything. Okay, but you know what? Those are pretty simple fixes, and, and you get that. Um, I've gotten some really weird reviews, though, from people. I've had journal editors write to me and say, you need to add more citations from our journal in your paper to get it published. What's the problem here? The problem here is maybe I didn't like any citations from their journal. I also get the comment that I need to add more recent citations. But what if the recent citations aren't significant? I just have to, so what I do is I blindly will go in and find some citations that are meaningless and I add them to my paper to please the reviewer. And did that make my paper better? No. Then you have journals, the new thing in, in journals and in other fields, this is becoming really, really common pay to publish. So yeah, we'll accept your journal. We just need $500. So essentially peer review process is being completely, they don't care about it in those journals. What they care about is that you're going to pay them that $500 to publish your article. So this is, these are huge problems happening, happening in academia. Um, you know, the, the, and other problems include, so peer reviewers aren't paid. This is faculty working for free, usually reviewing all these journals. Um, so how much time is someone who's working for free spending? How much do they care about it? What are the qualifications of those peer reviewers? They weren't hired. So there are peer reviewers who are just graduate students that don't know anything and they're peer reviewing. I mean, sometimes you get like three or four peer reviews. So you're hoping out, you know, even if one's not great, the other three or four can make up for that difference. But the person writing has to meet, address all the things those people said. So when you have someone unqualified peer reviewing, how, how do you know that it's going to be, they're going to provide a good review? And it's not just, you know, one person might be not be qualified, but how did we really qualify any of the people? What qualifies them? Um, sometimes it's being published in the journal, but, you know, they might have been the fourth author. So did they even really write the, the, the study that was accepted and stuff? Um, you know, I've had some really odd comments from my viewers. I had, this is a top journal in my field. One of the, that's known as the probably best journal in my field actually said to me, um, you have this funny symbol in your paper. I'm not sure. I think you should probably change it around because I don't know what it means. And I don't think our readers are going to know what it means either. That symbol was omega squared. A really common statistic. The person reading it actually use the word, I don't know what this funny symbol is. Can I trust publications from that journal anymore ever? I mean, I was just blown away. I was baffled by the comment. I mean, my response back was, this isn't a funny symbol. It's omega squared. You need to get different reviewers. Um, I've had reviewers tell me that just because we're spending millions of dollars a year doing this doesn't mean we should have any research on it actual comment from a reviewer about one of my papers just because we're spending millions of dollars a year doing this in corporate doesn't mean we, us in academia should be researching it doesn't mean it's important i mean just you know some some really 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 odd types of suggestions from reviewers which makes me really 
question the peer review process. Who are the people peer reviewing? Are they qualified? Well, you're not interviewed when you are hired as a peer reviewer. There's no interview. They, they're looking for volunteers. It's a volunteer basis. So, you know, I have a lot of issues trusting peer review. Um, I see articles published in peer reviewed papers and it's just really meaningless. I mean, I, I don't I don't think anything of it because I didn't trust the people that peer reviewed their paper. I have to go in and read the article and read the methodology and make sure it's actually correct because I can't trust it. That's why in the news we're seeing all these, you know, people are writing fake articles and getting them published in peer. This doesn't that doesn't surprise me whatsoever. The peer review process is so flawed that that's expected. It's so easy to write a fake article and get it in. That's why you're seeing these news stories out there in other fields. Not my field that hasn't happened to, but I'm sure it could be done very easily. So it's not I, I don't even think those articles are breaking. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's obviously that's going to happen because it's so easy to do. Um, we're really just not paying attention and doing a good job of making sure the articles are good. And if you want, you know, if you wanted to make the peer review process good, how do you do it? You like if a journal, if I, there was a journal that I thought was doing a good job, first of all, the editor needs to be paid. The peer reviewers need to be paid. They all need to be interviewed and qualified to do it. That's just a start to make the peer review process good. Then there needs to be some kind of good actual scoring rubric that shows you this is what makes an article good. Changing a word here and there, adding citations from your journal, no, that does not make an article actually better. And that's the next problem is what, what, what do we mean when we say make an article better? In my mind, that means is it correct? Is their methodology correct? Uh, have they done their data analyses correct? That's what makes, that's the start of what makes an article correct. But for some people it's, you know, you need a better introduction. That's all they're focusing on. And it's, it's different for everyone. And that, that's a problem that we don't have these clear definitions. Um, but those are some of my thoughts on peer review and, and some things that I wanted to get out there. And I think people should really be aware of this process. You know, do not accept anything, question it, and go in and really see if it's a good article or a good study or not. Don't just believe because it's in some journal that it's any better than a, a blog that I see online. It might as well not be because based on the peer review process, I'm seeing it's not, There's, there isn't, it's not any better. Um, thank you.